bring in the fake electors. You show them how strong you are at the Capitol, etc. All that madness. God, wouldn't, isn't it going to be an incredible relief when this Trump guy's finally out of our lives? Oh my God! It, like, I, think, I mean, I but think I, that, you know, the guy's such a clown that even if he gets clowned this time and loses, yeah. maybe he's not out of our lives. Maybe he'll try again. I could and maybe be wrong. MAGA is so insane that they'll nominate him again. I don't know. Look, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that. What you just said is very common among Democrats, right? They think that the real problem is Donald Trump, and once he's gone, everything will be okay again. But it's not just Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a symptom. Anna Kasparian is fed up with all of the woke nonsense happening, not just in the world, but more specifically with the Young Turks and with Jank Uger. In this video, Anna Kasparian on the Young Turks Live shuts down Jank Uger for delusions that he is bringing up here on this show. We all know that Jank Duger is very delusional and very, you know, he, he's very partisan in his opinion, so he'll never really take a nuanced stance. It's always like left wing, woke side, good. And Anna Kasparian is much more nuanced, and it seems like Anna Kasparian is definitely making her way out of the Young Turks, especially after clips like this. Let's get into this heated argument between Anna Kasparian and Jank Duger on the Young Turks. Is delivering to the political elites, the political establishment, and our institutions. It's the way in which he's delivering that message. He says, listen, when it comes to Donald Trump, he speaks a lot of folks' language. They don't care as much about the message. They care about how he's delivering the message because he delivers it in a way that they want to deliver it to Capitol Hill. So I Look, I we've talked about this before in in different contexts, right? So in this case, it's the harsh message to the political elites, but it's also the simple common man way that he communicates. And I do think that resonates with some voters. Now, who does Stephen A. Smith think will actually ultimately win the election? Well, he's very clear. He says, I still believe it's going to be Kamala Harris that's going to win this election. Wallace asks, really? And he says, I really do, I think she's going to win this election because I think that when you take away the fringes, folks on the fringe, on the extreme right and left, and you get to the center, I think ultimately people are going to look at her regardless of what they're saying about her. They're going to look at her and say, you can work with her. And finally, he says, and the way of the streets of America were, oh, where? Uh, were when he oh, departed. Yeah. We're, okay, so he's basically talking about like, look, people don't want to go back to what they experienced, especially in like the final year of Donald Trump. You know, you have uh, the coronavirus pandemic, you have all of this chaos, you have all of this instability. People aren't going to want to go back to that. So he believes that ultimately people will get out the vote for Kamala Harris. Yeah, and of course, January 6th, he said 2020, but uh, he was referring to the last days of Trump as well. And so uh, people don't want to go back to that madness where they, if the guy loses, he says, "Ah, oh, God, destroy democracy, bring in the fake electors, you show them how strong you are at the Capitol, etc." All that madness. God, wouldn't, isn't it going to be an incredible relief when this Trump guy's finally out of our lives? Oh my God! It, like, I, think, I mean, but I think I, you know, the guy's such a clown. Do you see how, dude? He can't. Jank can't even think about Donald Trump without actually derailing the entire conversation. Did you see that? I'm going to rewind so you can really take in what Jank just did. Like they were having a, a conversation about Stephen A. Smith and what he said about Donald Trump and, and his predictions for this next election, why people might vote for one candidate or the other. And Jank Uger is like, oh, Donald Trump. And then his brain just breaks. His brain genuinely just breaks. Check this out. Bring in the fake electors. You just show them how strong you are at the Capitol, etc. All that madness. God, wouldn't, isn't it going to be an incredible relief when this Trump guy's finally out of our lives? Oh my God! It, like, I, think, I mean, I but think I, you know, the guy's such a clown that even if he gets clowned this time and loses, yeah. maybe he's not out of our lives. Maybe he'll try again. I could and maybe be wrong. MAGA is so insane that they'll nominate him again. I don't know. Look, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that. What you just said is very common among Democrats, right? They think that the real problem is Donald Trump, and once he's gone, everything will be okay again. But it's not just Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a symptom. If you enjoy content like this, then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a ton. Let's get back to the video. Okay. The Republican voters favor Trump. It's the Republican voters who have, I mean, he didn't even have to participate in the primary debates. So they're going to look for a future candidate who is like Donald Trump. Yeah, I just, that's 100% right. 
it's just that it's hard to replicate the mania of Trump. That's true. Right, in in both in terms of the uh, the way he speaks to people and animates them. And so in order to get that kind of energy, so that's a downside for the Republicans that they'll be hard, he'll be hard to replace in that way. But also the mania of like just like almost uh, psychological terrorism where he like he's such a loose cannon. You don't know what the hell he's gonna do on any given day. Every day you wake up, did he launch, is his button bigger than North Korea? Is he gonna launch there? Is he gonna cause a war in the Middle East? Is he gonna wreck the economy? Is he gonna, you know, is he gonna nuke a hurricane? What the hell is he gonna do? So would you rather just have a man who can't even complete a, a full sentence in his brain? They would rather have that or they would rather have Kamala Harris who has just let America be invaded by incompetence or on purpose, who knows? But she's allowed America to be just flat out invaded by illegal immigrants, you know, coming in every single day and not really caring, showing no remorse and having no plan to stop it. Like, to me, it's like, oh, what Jenk is talking about, the fact that he's a loose cannon, what's the last thing that Trump said that, that, that has been like wild? Like, Donald Trump is not the same Donald Trump from 2016. He's just not, you know? And, He's trying to play into people like Anna Kasparian. What a freeze frame, by the way, on the screen right now. But he's trying to play into people like Anna Kasparian, who they're a little bit more left-leaning, but on the fence. I think that's hurting him more than it's helping him. I wish he would just go back to 2016 Trump. But the, the loose cannon thing, the mean tweets thing, it's kind of gone. Like, he doesn't really do that anymore very much. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. But I can't think of the last thing that Donald Trump said that lines up with what Jank Uger is talking about in that he's a loose cannon and everything. And he's trying to say that he was start like he, he was, you never knew if he was going to press the button before North Korea or whatever. Dude, look at what's happening around the globe right now. We have never been closer to World War III than we are right now. And it's not because of what Donald Trump did. It's because of what Joe Biden did and Kamala Harris did. And the fact that the entire world sees them and us as extremely weak when they are in charge. And whenever Donald Trump was in charge, Maybe the, maybe the fact that everybody views him as a loose cannon plays to our, our strength. Maybe that is what deters other people from other countries from sending immigrants to go invade us so that they can carry out terrorist attacks or invading other countries like Ukraine or like Taiwan or all these countries. Maybe that's what deters them because they know that Donald Trump might actually do something about it. Whereas they know for a fact that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are not going to do anything about it because they have proven that over and over again. Oh, right, because he's so mentally unstable. So a Josh Hawley or a J.D. Vance or a Vivek Ramaswamy might be fall popu faux populist, right? And they might lead in the wrong direction, but they're, it's hard for them to replicate that same kind of mania that, that Trump has that is so unnerving. I can right? agree with you on that for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. And then last thing is, is, Stephen A. Smith is also right about the way he speaks. And this is another thing that the Democrats and the establishment of the media don't understand at all. They can't get it through their heads. It, who's better at speaking to the average American, Donald Trump or Adam Schiff? Oh, pff, come on. No, no, in Washington, Adam Schiff would win like 97 to three. I mean, snooze fest, People, right. like no one's interested, okay? And, and if you're a, like a diehard Democrat, especially if you're really well educated, you're like, what do you mean? Adam Schiff speaks just like my professors in school. Okay, but people don't <laughs> wanna hear your professors in school. People want to hear a message that resonates with them. Remember, what got George W. Bush elected in, uh, was it 2000? 2000, 2000. Yeah. Yeah. It was because he was the kind of guy that they can see themselves having a beer with. Yeah, so, even though he was an alcoholic who stopped drinking, but yeah. <laughs> okay, but you guys get the point. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it. Yeah, I mean, I guess I get the point, but at the same time, like, whenever Jank Uger is so insane that he is consistently shut down by Anna Kasparian, who is definitely woke, like she's not, she's not on the right or anything, like she's not on the, she she hasn't taken the red pill fully. Whenever she consistently has to shut down Jank because of how insane he's getting, it's just it, it, you. That's when you know it's bad. And also Anna Kasparian is gaining this fan base that's outside of the Young Turks. Like a lot of people who comment on my videos and I see a lot of other people posting videos about Anna Kasparian talking about her and, and stuff like that. People are starting to really like Anna Kasparian outside of just the extreme woke left. The only problem with that is whenever you're liked by anybody outside of the woke left, the, the, the woke left absolutely hates you. Like the Young Turks fans are tired of Anna Kasparian. And I just think for a fact, Anna Kasparian is going to leave the Young Turks very soon. 
maybe she might even uh, she's exploded on Jank Huger a few times now, alive. It might come down to like a big argument that they have that just like causes the situation to boil over into Anna Kasparian actually leaving the Young Turks or maybe Jank firing her or, or something like that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments how you think this guy or how do you guys think this situation with Anna Kasparian and Jank Huger and the Young Turks is going to end. I think she's definitely going to leave the Young Turks very soon, but. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Let me know in the comments what you think about this whole Anna Kasparian versus Jenk Uger situation.